have been riding belt drive bikes across continents since 2010. And after more than 100,000 kilometers across 100 countries, I'm ready to tell you there is no better touring, bikepacking or commuting drivetrain available. I've taken belts across the hottest deserts into icy snowfields, through dense jungles, along beaches, up muddy tracks and to the top of the highest road in the world. I suspect there are few people on earth with the same real world experience as me. In this video, we'll look at what belt drive is, what the advantages and disadvantages are, and then I'll go through the frequently asked questions to make sure no rock is left unturned. Oh, and this is not a sponsored video. I haven't invested in any belt drive businesses and I am free to use chains on my bikes at any time. I'm just a big old fan of belts and I hope you can soon see why. So, what is belt drive? Belts are used to run the blowers on 10,000 horsepower racing engines, the powertrains of 150 horsepower motorbikes, and more recently, the drivetrains of many bicycles. Gates Corporation invented their first automotive belts about a century ago, and today they're the most popular brand of belt system for bikes. The belts themselves are made from a polymer that is reinforced using multiple carbon fiber cords. They are then usually paired with stainless steel cogs and durable alloy chain rings. And why do I think belts are the best drivetrain? Number one, belts have a very long service life. You can expect a belt drivetrain to last three to four times longer than a typical chain. That's upwards of 30,000 kilometers, even in the poor riding conditions you often see me flailing about in. Additionally, they're impervious to water and salt, so there's no rust here, even after months of cycling through intense wet seasons. Number two, belts require little to no maintenance. Belts do not stretch, they do not require lubrication, they are never greasy, and they do a surprisingly good job of clearing the mud out. Just a splash of water is usually enough to keep them going. Number three, belt drivetrains are perfectly silent. You know when your chain is freshly cleaned and lubed and running perfectly silent? Well, that's a belt pretty much all of the time. Number four, belts are lighter than chains. You can expect a weight saving of between 100 and 300 grams when compared to chain drive. The upsides are looking pretty darn good, but what about the downsides? Number one, you cannot use belt drive with derailers. A belt is designed to run in a perfectly straight line. That means it cannot be paired with derailers, chain rings or cassettes, but it can be used with a gearbox at the crankset or an internal gear hub at the rear wheel. Number two, you need a belt compatible frame. As belts are usually one piece, your frame will need to be designed with a belt splitter in the rear triangle so that you can fit a belt to your bike. The frame also needs to be stiffness test approved to ensure that the frame will not flex sideways too far, causing the belt to wander off the rear cog. Number three, replacement parts are not found in typical bike shops. I personally have never found this to be a problem. I buy all of my spare parts online and I always carry a spare belt for emergencies. I usually travel for 18 months before I even start thinking about ordering replacement parts. Number four, there's a higher upfront cost. A belt drivetrain is not super cheap, but they are cost efficient. Provided you get the full mileage out of your belt drivetrain, I've estimated you'll go 125 kilometers per dollar. This is the equivalent of a chain drivetrain costing you about $60 per 7,500 kilometers. For reference, that's the same price as the longest lasting chain we have, which wears out at between 5,000 and 7,000 kilometers. And number five, it's a less efficient drivetrain. Derailers are undoubtedly the most efficient drivetrains available with an average drive efficiency across all gears of between 95 and 97%. As you need to employ a gearbox system on a belted bike, there will always be additional frictional losses. According to the data we have, Shimano internal gear hubs and pinion gearboxes are a bit over 90% efficient, while the roll-off hub jumps to over 94% efficient. The efficiency discrepancy is one of the reasons you'll rarely see gearbox and belt drivetrains on race bikes. There can be additional resistance at the belt too, but it's a much smaller percentage than the gearbox itself. Let's move on to all of the frequently asked questions you might have about belt drivetrains. 
How does Gates Carbon Drive feel to ride? A belt rides just like a well lubricated chain, but it has a slightly different humming sound. And despite its looks, it feels just as stiff and solid to ride as a chain. How do you repair a belt? It's very easy to remove a chain link on the side of a trail. Belts, on the other hand, are designed to be replaced. Rather than carrying a chain tool, it's prudent to carry a spare belt which coils down into a small enough size. I've broken just one 31,000 kilometer old belt in the last 10 years. So emergency belt replacement never actually crosses my mind. When do you know a belt is too worn? Surprisingly, it's the rear cog that wears the fastest on a belt drivetrain. The teeth can get very, very pointy. Given that I stray pretty far from services, I usually swap my entire drivetrain out as a precautionary measure at about 30,000 kilometers. I've never actually found the true distance limit where the belts cease to work, but it looks like the lifespan may have just been extended as Gates has just introduced a new high hardness steel cog this week. What's the deal with belt resistance? Perhaps you've seen videos of people stacking weights on pedals to show the difference in drive resistance between a belt and a chain. These tests are a bit misleading because chain and belt friction increases at different rates. The belt slope is actually four times less steep. There is a crossover point where a belt becomes more efficient than a chain. It's when you're pedaling at 212 watts. This is a bit higher than the typical cyclist pushes, so expect around half a watt penalty on the belt system in ideal riding conditions, but likely a better efficiency in adverse conditions due to the way a belt can remove debris from the cogs. That said, if you use a particularly stiff frame, you can lower the belt tension below the recommendation. You didn't hear this from me, but I've been slowly reducing the belt tension on my Koga over the last year, and frankly, it's getting ridiculous. My belt can now touch my chainstay. It is so far beyond the minimum that I can't even measure it. And I'm a very strong rider with a very heavy load riding up incredibly steep mountain roads. At my approximate belt tension and at the power outputs I push, my belt is likely running the same or lower friction than a chain. I only recommend trying this with a belt snubber fitted, which will make sure the belt stays on even if the belt tries to skip. So, what is the actual maintenance like? If you ride in adverse conditions, it's a great idea to use a toothbrush and water to clean any debris off the system, if only to reduce the wear on your cogs. In dry conditions with very fine dust, a belt drivetrain can sometimes make an infuriating squeaking sound. This is very easily remedied by using a silicon spray, which immediately dries onto your belt. I am currently experimenting with treadmill silicon lubricant, which stays wet a bit longer, attracting more grit in the short term, but it seems to require fewer applications. Roll-off biodegradable chain lube is known to work similarly. Just make sure to skip the Hanseline belt care stick. It's extremely sticky and frankly, a terrible product for a belt. How do you adjust the belt tension? Unlike chains, belts do not get longer over time, resulting in a true set and forget drivetrain. There are two typical ways to set the tension of a belt. Some bikes use sliding rear dropouts, but from speaking to a handful of bike engineers, it sounds like an eccentric bottom bracket shell allows for the stiffest possible rear triangle for running the lowest possible belt tensions. You can use your smartphone to appropriately determine the tension of your belt. By plucking the belt, your smartphone app will decipher the tension frequency and determine if your belt tension is correct. As you can see, my belt falls below the frequency range, but if we tension everything up, we can get a reading. Don't belts destroy bearings? It's possible that a belted bike with the maximum belt tension could prematurely wear bearings. But on a bike engineered for belts, the frame will be stiff enough so that the tension is the equivalent of a rider using a chain and pedaling at 250 watts, which is not at all that unusual. Aren't there limited gear ratios available? There are four rear cog sizes, there are four sprocket sizes, and there are 20 belt lengths to choose from. This should not at all be limiting for the purposes of touring and commuting. Can you modify a frame for belt drive? I have taken two touring frames to a custom frame builder to get rear belt splits installed in the rear triangles. 
They have worked just fine, but I've had to use a high belt tension as the rear triangles had more side-to-side -side flex than a dedicated belted frame. Are there any other belt companies? Gates completely dominate the market when it comes to belt drivetrains, but there are a few manufacturers offering alternatives, including Via, Accord, and Driveline. Via looks to be the most promising and has one big advantage over Gates. Their belts are able to split, which means that you can fit them to any bike. As the rear triangles of a typical bike are not designed to be particularly stiff, I suspect the Via system will have a high friction when retrofitted to a bike. But that said, you still get all the advantages of belt drive, so I think it's a really cool product if you're belt curious and don't want an entirely new bike. Let's wrap this up. I hope this information has hit every possible belt talking point. I have put belt drivetrains through the ringer for 10 years, taking them into the world's most remote locations, and I'm certain there is no better drivetrain available for touring, bikepacking, and commuting. If the idea of a gearbox system like the roll-off or pinion is compelling to you, definitely skip the chain option and pair it with belt drive. They are incredibly long-lasting, virtually maintenance-free, lightweight, and silent to ride. You can support this content over on Patreon. You can follow me cycling about on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Bikepacking Bike Buyers Guide and the Touring Bicycle Buyers Guide. Learn cool shit on cyclingabout.com. Leave a comment below, and here's a challenge. Try and convince me that chains are better than belts.